Face power and protection, beautiful Scorpios. Welcome so much for tuning and tapping in to Clara Audience Truth Speaker. I appreciate you all showing back up. You know, a sister has been on hiatus. And I just appreciate you all for your loyalty and just for your appreciation and love of the readings. Thank you all for your feedback. You know, I'm one of those people that interact. Um, so when you drop a comment, I'm right underneath that comment, you know, interacting with you all. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for, you know, returning and showing love. And all of y'all was talking about how much you missed me that touched me here. <laughs> I appreciate you all. I missed you just as much. Trust and believe. Uh, to any of you that may be new, welcome to the Soul Tribe Soul Family. Um, I will that this message resonates. I will that the way that I read vibes with your vibe. Um, the way that things work on this side of the planet is I channel messages intuitively. I am a clairaudient reader, so I do listen to music incorporated in the reading. And the name of the song, lyrics within the song, title of the, you know, the track, maybe the thumbnail, all of those things. Even the, you know, the messages that come out in the cards, what I may be channeling intuitively, it will all correlate to whatever may I may be channeling. Um, and it all just kind of blends very beautifully. So my spiel here is eat the fish, spit out the bones. If it doesn't apply, let it fly by. Do not try to force anything to be your story. Check your other placements in your natal chart to see what other readings, what other signs uh, may better correlate to whatever you may be experiencing in your personal life. Remember, these are general readings. I don't know what's going on personally with you, but you could take what does apply. Um, you know, eat the fish, spit out the bones. That's my model. That's my spiel. Um, my readings are also timeless. So whenever this video popped up in your feed, whenever you felt compelled to click play, whether it was by means of the timestamp or the thumbnail or the title of the video, that was all divine timing and in divine order for you to have done so. So without further ado, I am going to proceed with the read. I, oh, I done turned my light off. Um, I have a touch lamp. So every time I try, I'm trying to put my charger back in because my charger then fell out of let me make sure i got it oh man what's going on give me one moment family i'm like is it mercury retrograde because i've been having so many little technical issues as of late so i'm just like yow there we go just needed to see that battery just doing what it need to do beloved i hate to be two hours in the reading and the damn screen goes black that has happened so i've learned from my mistake to make sure everything is everything before i get into my my uh spiel here you know uh, my diatribe so without further ado as i said we're just going to proceed with the read. we're not going to do too much speaking today um so let's do some house cleaning ashe I call upon the elements of water, fire, earth, air, ether, and spirit. Ah, shay. I ask our beautiful angels, archangels, ancestors, ascended masters, spirit guides, deities, animal totems, earth, mother, Gaia, universe, source, the divine, to shine a powerful, powerful message of love and of light. I call personally upon Baba Obatala, Mama Oya, and Baba Ogun to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. Help me to pick up on the energy, number, synchronicity, and vibrations of my cards. And so it is. So mote it be. Ashe, 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 yo. So the time on the Klizak, we have 602. That reduces to 8. 8 is the number of the strength card. Um, so some of you all may be taking your power back. You may have taken your power back. You may be in a position of power right now. You may feel very powerful, whether that be spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically. Um, I definitely get a sense of you all being in a position where you are assertive, where you are standing erect, standing your ground, not backing down. I definitely feel that there has been some sort of stage in your life where you've had to kind of turn pain into power. You've learned how to, you know, balance things out in your own life, in your own kind of, um, in your own unique way. Um, I feel that there was 
great situations, like great um, circumstances, which resulted in you, uh, you know, having to take your power back. Maybe you were dealing with, I'm hearing, I'm hearing narcissists. Some of you all were dealing with narcissists and it's very difficult, um, you know, dealing with a narcissist because there are so many different um, levels to a narcissist. They can love bomb you. They can, um, they can be very manipulative. They can be emotionally manipulative. There's always a constant um, power struggle with them. There's also this sense of like, um, just kind of like, you may have dealt with someone who would ghost you as a, a means of kind of disempowering you or making you feel like you've done something wrong when in fact they were the ones that were the aggressives um, or maybe the, um, not the aggressor, but someone who was like the, um, the antagonist, if you will. So it's like you were dealing with someone that you've really had to learn to establish some sort of boundaries and to stand in your power when you were facing this certain person or this certain situation or even this certain entity. Maybe you've been um, dealing with, you know, a bully in some degree, whether it be someone who was at your place of employment, who may have been in a position of power, who was, you know, kind of abusing that power. Maybe this was in a relationship where you were feeling powerless because you were dealing with someone who was narcissistic. It didn't doesn't have to be like a love ship. It could be a family member, a mother, a father. Um, but I feel that, that you're now in a position where you are stronger, where you're wiser, and you've established some sort of boundaries. I also get a sense um, that you have some good karma coming to you. That eight is the infinity symbol sideways. So I do feel like you have some sort of wish fulfillment, something that's coming in and it has a lot to do with what you've done in the past. It's now reaping some sort of reward for you. You are reaping a reward based off the seeds that you've sowed in good faith or based off of your good deeds, based off of you being, you know, obedient or righteous in making certain decisions. You weren't um, acting out of a place of malice or a place of you know, contempt or, or even, um, vindictiveness. I feel like there was more so a focus on really just doing things the right way or the just way. Uh, so you're now in a position of power and that is why there's some sort of blessings coming through, whether that be, uh, financially or whether that be emotionally, you may feel very satisfied or very, um, you know, just very, um, much in equilibrium or harmonious, uh, cause the eight is also giving, you know, like that wish fulfillment, the star. So I do feel like you remaining hopeful and optimistic about certain situations and not living in a spirit of lack, uh, is what's rendering some sort of blessing or some sort of positive outcome. So that number eight is, you know, like I said, it's like what goes around comes back around again. So your good deeds are now, you know, reaping their, st they're now harvesting rather. Um, I also get a sense of maybe you were dealing with a karmic situation where, um, someone came into your life to kind of teach you these lessons or teach you how to establish boundaries or teach you how to be more disciplined, um, and prioritizing you, yourself, your needs, your wants, your desires. And now there's this energy of you uh, really, really standing or or kind of um, exuding the sense of strength, the sense of confidence. Um, and it's all based and rooted in self-love. That was one of the things you may have had to learn. Uh, some of you all had to walk away from uh, former relationships in order to uh, now be in this 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 air of confidence or in this air of self-love. And now that's making you know a lot of your um, your dreams, your your wishes, your hopes, your aspirations. They're now starting to come into fruition because you're now in the power that you need to be in to manifest some of these things that you may have been you know, uh, you know, setting the intention on. So the song that's playing on the playlist right now, um, is we have, who is this? Let me turn it down. I don't want to get a strizike. So we have, um, new edition. Let me, oh, come here. So we have new edition and I may have turned it all the way down. All right. Yeah, I did. So we have a little bit of love is all it takes. <laughs> so I was, I was speaking to you showing yourself self-love. 
um, because that's always, you know, an inside job. And that's always the most important. Like you have to love you first. You have to be able to pour into your own cup before you could pour into anyone else's. So a little bit of love is all it takes. And this is from new edition. So I do feel like with that new edition, this is saying that this is the new you. This is how you have had some sort of rebirth. You've been reborn as someone who now is, um, more uh loving you know you love yourself you're more self uh aware you're more self-disciplined um and so this is also going to make you very attractive i'm also getting with that eight that you've walked away from those relationships that were not feeding and nurturing you um spiritually emotionally um they definitely weren't speaking your love language so you had to walk away but with a little bit of love is all it takes i definitely feel that you had to show yourself that love you had to you know uh pour into yourself um because whoever you were dealing with was not pouring into you at all you know so we're gonna tap in dive in and see what we have coming in going out going on with the kids arts so my beloveds i will all is bliss with y'all so look at this we started the reading with eight and now we have eight eight abundance i love it so eight eight abundance this is the second time in a row and i want you all to really do your math like you know you got a lot of tower readers on youtube and it's always a beautiful thing but i always tell you all to use your own discernment when it comes to tower readings when it comes to any of these spiritual practices you always have to use your own discernment and your own intuition and you never submit your will people should ought to be able to show and prove meaning if they say that they are something you should be able to see them exude or exhibit said gift so for instance i'm an intuitive reader i say that i'm an intuitive reader and throughout my reading things that i say before i even touch the cards comes out in the reading even on down to the cards even on down to the songs so i want you all to be very very discerning when you're watching youtube um tower readers uh because you have a lot of false prophets out here people who claim to be one thing they just choose names that seem very um, you know, catchy. Um, and they say they're things that they have not proven to be. Um, I can pull up my last five readings and point out exactly like what I say is what comes out in the reading period. Um, I don't make it up. That's why I like, you know, I'm very anal at showing you things because I don't want you to get, I don't want you to be in a habit of just trusting what people say. I want you to like, hold people accountable so if they say they're intuitive then you should be able to see some of that intuition you know show up in the reading that they're doing for you otherwise it's just it's all entertainment you know what i'm talking about so with the eight eight it's on the bottom of the deck um we started the reading with the number eight so this eight eight is showing with the 16 that breakdown is seven that is saying that there is something moving forward this is abundance the seven deals with the crown when you break down the eight um that crown energy speaks to your personal growth speaks to you being in a level where you have kind of like mastered your craft like you are in some sort of god frequency or you're tapped in um you have a very divine connection you know to your angels to your ancestors um very beautiful connection i feel like you're also you have divine knowledge divine wise dome um which is why you're now you know uh obtaining some sort of blessings or some sort of wish fulfillment and it's going to come abundantly um and as i said this is based off your good deeds this is based off good karma uh what you've done in the past what goes around comes back around again the infinity symbol is speaking to an infinite supply and so i feel like you are going to be very emotionally fulfilled i'm hearing the word vetted so i do feel like many of you are going to be vetted either for a love ship perhaps for some sort of workshop, maybe even in business, but I'm absolutely getting a sense that you will be very successful and that you are going to be like successful in many ways. It isn't just solely about material wealth. I'm getting a sense of you being successful in love, being successful in business, being successful in life in general. You may have a very happy home. I definitely feel like whomever you're dealing with, because I feel like Whenever I see, you know, double numbers for those who may be newcomers, I always feel that this is the energy and vibration you're attracting to you. So who or what you're attracting to you is in the same energy of abundance. And being that this is a pink card that deals with the heart chakra along with green is also the heart. But this is showing like 
there is some sort of passion or something that you are very, um, very, very committed to, passionate of, um, that is going to bring in some sort of uh, blessings. You're going to receive something abundantly. So this is almost like something is blossoming and it's coming in, you know, um, even if it's not blossoming, it's already blossoming. It's on its way in because I'm just feeling like it's a very beautiful energy. Uh, nonetheless, seven deals with that chariot. And whenever I think of the chariot, I don't only get, you know, an energy of yin and yang with the black and the white horse, but even just the energy of harmony. Um, maybe you're coming into harmony with your higher self. You're coming into harmony um, with yourself where you're feeling more grounded, you know, more solid after dealing with some sort of karmic or after dealing with some sort of narcissistic energy. What's playing now is Force MDs, and this is called... Um, Love is a house. So I do want to show you that. So four some Ds, somebody could be from Staten Island. Um, the four some Ds, I do feel like you were forced to, you know, kind of take your power back. Um, it was either you continue to um, live in the shadow of another person or you take your power back. And I feel like you did the latter. Um, with four some Ds, I'm also getting a sense of like, like you had to, um, heal yourself because the MDs, um, that's like, you know, an acronym for medical doctor. So I'm just feeling like you had to really heal yourself. You were forced to work on you, to love you. And in doing that, that's what also contributed or aided you in taking your power back and standing in your strength. So this is a very beautiful energy because I was picking up a sense of like turning pain into power. And that's absolutely what I'm gathering from this. So with love is a house, I do feel like something within the household previously, um, love was not was not present, you know, um, maybe you were loving someone, maybe you were doing, um, all of the loving. You may have been the one that was the nurturer or the caregiver or the caretaker or the provider. Um, but it wasn't a reciprocal, um, gesture. So I feel like now, perhaps since you've moved away from those toxic type of entanglements, you are now feeling more balanced. And I just saw 1717 17, and that 1717 17 breaks down to 88 which is this number here. So now you are receiving blessings and you're going to receive them abundantly based off of the work that you've done. So this is very beautiful. So what we have on the split is we have follow your dreams and then we have 88. So this is 85, which is 13. So this is the transformation. You had a startle and metamorphosis, which led you to being true to you, which is what I was saying earlier about, you know, doing what you were most passionate about. So no longer prioritizing others, but prioritizing yourself yourself. And that's what's bringing a lot of stability into your life. Because at 13, you know, the death card is your energy, but that does break down to four. So I feel like, you know, with that four, um, you're now in this position where you feel a little more stable, you know, a little more stability in your life, a little more secure. Perhaps you feel a little more self-sufficient uh, because you're not dealing with someone who could be, um, you know, kind of depleting your energy or taking advantage of you. And when you transformed and changed, changed and emerged someone new, this is why you're receiving something in abundance. So even in this symbol, you know, there's, um, there is this color, um, pink, which is the same color as this. So it's just showing me that you're now feeling very fulfilled, um, emotionally or fulfilled, um, you know, feel fulfilled financially even. So let me, I don't know why this battery keeps, um, This is annoying. Hold on one moment. My charger is like busted up. So it's just like, I got to fool around with it. It's so annoying. There we go. All right. So on the split again. So we got 57 teaching and learning. And then we have follow your dreams. So that's what you've learned. That was part of the lessons 
you know, this teaching and learning with that 12. This is like, you know, being in a sacrificial position to look at things in a different perspective. And so you've had to learn at the same time. You could have been teaching the same person that was teaching you to take your power back and establish power uh, boundaries, that narcissist. You were also teaching them because every, you know, relationship, every connection, every person that comes into your life, even by a, for a moment, um, they're there for a reason. No, no meeting is accidental. So I feel like there is this, you know, reciprocal gesture of teaching and learning. And I feel like you were more susceptible and open and receptive, I should say, to learning the lessons and, you know, applying what you've learned and changing what needed to change and even ultimately purging what no longer served you. And that's really what caused, you know, this major transformation. Because, you know, when you have a death, the death is, it could be literal, you know, perhaps there was someone that passed away that, you know, kind of opened your eyes and made you look at things in a different way. Uh, maybe this is someone who um, is also kind of just analyzing the demise of a relationship. And that was the learning lesson. That was the teachable um, lesson that one needed in order to, you know, kind of wake up and see things differently. So let's tap in and see. So the 1717 spirit is bringing me back to the 1717. Um, synchronized message which is the star so that star is saying wishes are coming true and we have this intuition here so always trust your intuition i don't have to tell you that i feel like that's just who scorpios are innately you're just naturally psychic you're naturally clairvoyance you're naturally clairaudient you're just naturally uh um a very in tune individual so you are very sensitive when it comes to energy you're sensitive when it comes to certain things and I feel like this is something that you all could also be kind of honing in on. Maybe there is some sort of surge of information or surge of energy you're picking up on at this time. It could be coming from a divine masculine because that 2-2 two, two reduces to 4. But again, this is a double number, a mirrored number. So this does make me feel like you and another person could be, again, in the same energy and vibration. So this 2s are the high priestess. So that's really just, you know, speaking to you having divine knowledge and divine wisdom. So you could be a spiritual practitioner. Or you could be a tarot reader, you could be a psychic, you could be a channeler, you could be a scryer, you could be a healer, shaman, light worker, you could be a Reiki healer, you could be someone who's in the practice, you could be a witch, warlock, you could be someone who bewitches, I don't know, but whatever it is you do, it's a spiritual gift that you have and that you possess. With the 16 rebirth, I mentioned you have going through that startling metamorphosis. I even mentioned a rebirth, like you were going through some sort of, you know, transformation and you're now you know standing erect standing in your power because you have reached this level of of you know divine knowledge and wise dome that 16 again is the crown that 16 breaks down to seven which is also you know the chariot so this is things are moving forward because you've gone through a major transformation with the 93 that's another 12 so when you look at things and analyze them you know and also analyze oneself or go through some sort of self analysis or introspective or reflective work, you are going to meet, reach some level of, um, you know, un understanding that's going to allow for you to make the right decision. And it's going to lead to something ending very happily for you. So I do feel like, you know, even with the transformation, it's never an easy process. When you think of everything you have to grow through um, to get to a place where you are now stable or where, you know, things are starting to kind of fall in line or things are flowing. Um, when you look back in awareness, you, you see all of these obstacles and all of these, you know, certain, you know, um, um, pitfalls that you've avoided. Um, and it was never an east, never an easy journey. Um, you know, that dark night of the soul journey is never easy, but you have persevered. And so that's why spirit is saying that you, um, are going to have a very happy ending. We have number seven, personal growth. I've been speeding, speaking that the entire time I said personal growth. I was saying that you've reached that level of, you know, even self mastery or having a deeper, more profound understanding of yourself being very in tune, very intuitive or very discerning. And when you are using your own subconscious thoughts or when you are trusting in your own discernment or using your own gumption to make decisions, then you will never be led astray. And when you have someone who's narcissistic trying to convince you that their way is the right way, you're in a dictatorship. You're dealing with someone who's trying to control you. And that's why I was saying 
never submit your will, you know, to no one. I don't care who it is, be it your mother, father, sister, brother, like your, your will is yours. That's your power. So you've learned to trust only your intuition and to not go by, you know, idle words from other people. You, you chose to, you know, trust what your higher self is telling you. And that's what's led to some sort of blessing. We have Fela Kuti and the name of the song is called Lady. So in one of my decks, the lady is considered the divine feminine in 66. And I'm even hearing uh, many of you feminines carried yourselves like a lady. You didn't resort to screaming and yelling and cussing the mofo out, even though you could have, you carried yourself and conducted yourself like the lady that you are, because you know your worth and your value. You don't need to stoop to anyone's level to get your point across. So with the 66, I mentioned healing, and that's absolutely what many of you had to do. Like I said, and then it's 624 on the clock. So that's a, a mirror. That's confirmation. So many of you definitely took the time to assess, to kind of do that introspective work. And that was the grand epiphany perhaps, or maybe that's what led to some sort of, um, aha moment for you to start to make certain changes or start to perhaps even rid yourself of certain belief systems and ideologies with the healing. That's what's also kind of opened up the floodgates to your healing, um, is that deep reflection because the 12 deals with the hangman. So that's when spirit flips you over. It's a sacrificial position for you to kind of look at things from a different perspective, a different angle. This could be either your energy looking at a situation and this could be someone looking at you but this is exactly where we are and that 12 does reduce to three which is also the empress and the name of the song as i said is lady which is the empress the divine feminine and that is a very powerful beautiful attractive you know very strong very masterful type of energy she is a creative she is the umi the mother the matriarch even if this is a masculine energy the same thing is applicable but it is all of the, you know, the masculine energy, the emperor, the patriarch, the paternal energy, the provider, um, you know, that alpha energy, that's both, both parts is very alpha, very much in control. This is he, you know, who all of the Queens and Kings, they aspire to be like that Empress and Emperor. So what we have that flew out is we have the number five change. This came out in the former reading five deals with the throat chakra. So I do feel like maybe there's a conversation or maybe you all have learned to kind of just speak your truth, express yourself. Um, you're opening up your throat chakra. Maybe you're tapping in to your creativity, honing skills, gifts, and talents. I definitely see maturation and that's what led to some change because you've had a change of mind, a change of your, um, your thought process. Um, which has changed your reality or shaped your reality. I absolutely feel like many of you, as I said, um, you know, could be kind of going through some sort of initiation. Maybe you're going through a rites of passage. Maybe you're studying under someone. Maybe you're in classes. Um, this could also be speaking to perhaps, you know, a very serious relationship or commitment that could lead to marriage because I'm definitely getting married because the lady is a wife. Um, she is not single out here. Um, a divine feminine is not, you know, someone who's going to be single for long, I should say, uh, because she's, she's definitely someone that could get anyone she wants, but you are not just going to, um, entertain any offer. You're, you know, your worth. So you're going to entertain the offers of those who you find to speak your love language, you know, who you find are on your frequency or who, those that you may have some sort of chemistry or some, you know, um, synergy with, uh, commonalities, famili familiarities, um, similarities. So let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. So we have 6-6 six, six healing yet again. So who or what you're attracting to you could be someone who's also um, growing and learning and healing and processing. Um, same as you had to. Um, I see that you've come out of that stage. Like you may have recently, you know, had some sort of karmic completion and you've gone through that process of healing and learning. And now you are, you know, coming, you know, kind of stepping back out there. Uh, the five, the change is just saying that there are some positive changes that are also going to take place. So this card is kind of standing up. There's actually two of them and I'm going to take them. This is another 41, five, five. So five, five is a very powerful number. Some of you all could be 55. Some of you could have been born in 19. 1955 five could be your life path number you could be born on November 23rd uh, I'm sorry November 5th or November 15th uh 14th pardon me um you could be someone who's you know um 
maybe you're dealing with someone whose solar return is on the fifth, but I feel with this five, five in this deck, um, 55 is adventure. So I do get a sense of like, there's going to be something exciting. Remember I spent, I mentioned self-discipline earlier, um, before I even touched the cards, I was just explaining how now you're in control, um, and no longer under the control of some sort of narcissist or someone who, you know, kind of like stonewalls and love bombs and is, you know, kind of flighty in and out. It's all calculative, um, what they do. Um, and it's just to maintain that level of control and to manipulate ultimately, um, to confuse, you know, that's a, anything that comes around and causes confusion. That is a low vibration. Um, light is the way, you know, light is always the way, but when someone comes in and you feel more confused, um, with them in your life than you do with them out, that's a sign that they need to stay out. You need to establish boundaries because that that's an intentional energy. Um, you know, that's an intentional energy and someone who does not take accountability and responsibility are usually typically those that come in and cause confusion um, because they don't, you know, they never are, um, you know, accountable for the things that they do. So if this is someone, I'm getting an energy of someone that comes in, causes chaos, disappears, then tries to come back as if nothing happened. And then when you confront them about their form of action, they act as if you're crazy for even, how dare you even bring that up? Like, who, what are you talking about? Like, how dare you confront me about the wrong that I've done to you? Like, it's, it's almost that type of energy to the point where it almost makes you feel crazy dealing with a crazy energy. So if you have someone in your life like that, that's their intention, that's who they are, leave them them alone there's nothing you could do for them that is going to be if you continue to deal with that energy it's just going to suck you right back into that whirlwind of confusion and delusion that you just fought so hard to get out of so with this energy self-discipline i definitely feel like right now you are prioritizing you this is something that you've learned this is that maturation i was picking up is again um with that change those were the changes that you made the changes were to prioritize you five and five breaks down to ten and ten is the the is that um, wheel of fortune. And so it's like a turning point right now. And as I said, I'm picking up that there's going to be more exciting times. There's more adventure because someone else was just like a dark cloud or they were just a very dark energy period. And I feel now um, that cycle's completed because with the 10, I feel this just like the wheel is turning now in your favor. I feel like, you know, there's going to be a turning point even where, you know, more positives are coming in. Every ending denotes a new beginning and tens are endings. So I do feel like now you're like on this, you know, this new energy, this new vibration. And remember, you know, spirit was saying that you were going to have a happy ending because we saw that 93. So I do feel like you realize that it's in your best entrance, um, interest to, you know, leave something behind and focus on the self um, or to focus on, you know, starting, you know, having some sort of new beginning because that's what's f best for you. Uh, what's playing now is close the door. So as I'm talking about, look at this, I cannot make this ish up. So as I'm talking about it, what's best for you is to like leave something behind and focus on your new beginning. I hope you can see it because in the last reading, I was noticing that I was like my, the way I was positioned in the um, iPad, it was very difficult for you to see what I was trying to show you. So with close the door, this is Teddy P. Many, many of you could be dealing with someone named Teddy. Um, but this is, um, you know, what you all have done. You've closed the door on your past. That's like walking through to, you know, another chapter in your life. So this is very beautiful. So close the door on your past so that you can have a new future. We have 71 health. That's another eight. So many of you are definitely feeling stronger now. I feel if you were feeling a little sick or you had, you know, some sort of dis-ease or some discomfort or some physical ailments, I feel like now you're getting stronger. Maybe some of you were dealing with some sort of seasonal allergies um, that could have turned into a sinus infection or something like that but I feel like now you're getting stronger I feel like you're getting you know you're getting your strength back or you're getting your like a second wind if you will um, but I'm also getting a sense of like with this health I do feel like spirit is also saying that someone could have been negatively um, impacting or affecting your health health and maybe that's something that you were forced to you know kind of look at um, you know, you were forced to kind of look at that connection or look at that relationship with this eight and this five, that's definitely speaking to the demise of a situation. Um, so something did have to end in order for you to have this new beginning. And I feel like you realized you needed to close the door in the past. So you needed to turn things, you know, to leave something behind. So something has come full circle now where you may feel 
finally feel like you're in your in your power. I feel with um this 22, we're about to pull the energy for what's hidden. So we have the five for your overall energy, 41 for who or what you're attracting, and 71 for how they feel about you. And then we have this number 22 for what's hidden on the bottom of the deck. So spirit is obviously saying it's imperative for you to trust your, um, your intuition and to use discernment. That's something that you should already be doing. I feel that's something you're already doing with self-discipline here. Um, you've learned to, you know, not go against what you know, um, to be, best for you to go against what you know is right for you um we have the 22 that four so i feel like they're saying the matters of the heart definitely um use your intuition don't just be all in based off of what someone is saying especially if you're dealing with someone who's a karmic um spirit is saying it's time to leave that person alone leave the past in the past um and leave them behind, you know, because the eight is given straight eight of cups. You know, you have to love yourself more than you love anyone else. And if someone is, you know, trying to come back from your past, I definitely feel like spirit is, is warning you to close the door. There's nothing more there for you to learn or nothing more there for you to teach. It's like the lesson has been learned. And unless you want to repeat that cycle all over again. Then you can open the door and invite the devil in again. But I'm telling you, you're not going to have any different outcome. You know, I'm talking about you're going to get bit in the ass again and again and again. Because look at this. I can't make this up. Ten of Cups. I mean, the Ten Karmic Completion. So this was definitely, I said Ten of Cups. So this could have been like some sort of family dynamic. This could have been someone that you were in a love ship with. And remember, we had love as a house. And I was speaking to like, there was no love other than the love you were giving. So with this 10 completion and with Teddy P saying, close the door, baby, this is this is confirmation that that is what they want you to do with this. This is what's hidden in the energy is that this is what spirit is saying you need to do. So with five and five, 10, that's one, one in um, eight, that's nine, nine and one is 10. All of these cards here reduced to 10. Tens are endings. So spirit is telling you, wrap it up. And then we got another 10 as I'm speaking of 10. And it says surrender to spirit. So this is about not trying to be in control or to even control the narrative. This is about you doing what you know you need to do and not doing what you feel you want to do. What you need to do is make sure that whatever is coming in and causing this confusion or whatever or whomever that was, you know, kind of puppet mastering or playing the devil's advocate, whomever this person is, because I was getting a dark, gloomy energy, a dark period that you were dealing with. This is what it was. Gray means there was a lot of tears that you may have shed. There was a lot of pain that could have been caused. The spirit is saying it's time for you to surrender and let it go. You know, it's time to surrender it. Let it go. It's in the hands of the Most High. Spirit is also saying through Teddy P, Rising Power King, that it's time to close the door on that past, on that past person, on your past circumstance. This could even be a job if it's not a love situ situation, but it's time to move on to something bigger and better because there's something bigger and better for you. We have 85 yet again. And that's follow your dreams. They want you to follow your dreams. Follow your dreams, your aspirations. You have 74 and then you have 11. So this is 11, 11, 56 and 74 is 11, 11. Many of you have a new love, a new love interest that could be entering, you know, the scene that could be entering your life. So this is a new person that's going to make you feel, you know, like the situation is very like um divinely ordained i heard divinely ordained and then we have light my fire so as i was saying you're going to meet someone that is you know kind of like you're going to have that same synergy you know there's going to be this beautiful chemistry i can't keep showing this because um it's just it's time consuming um, but I am so anal and I like to show and prove, but you have someone that's going to light your fire. So this is someone that's going to be very passionate about you. Um, this is someone that's definitely with the 11. This is like, I'm getting like the two of cups with the 11, um, because this 11 is like a portal. So many of you, you're attracting someone who's also done some healing of their own because I see one and one and ones always tell me that you have had to learn to love yourself. I said earlier, 10 of cups, um, you know, and there are no accidents. It was a slippage. It was a, a Freudian um, slip. So I feel like there was a desire to have like a 10 of cups situation, but you were dealing with someone who was toxic, who was a narcissist, who didn't 
didn't have, um, you know, the, the, the autonomy or capacity to love you in the way that you deserved or the way that you, you know, you desired. And so spirit is saying, now you're going to attract someone, um, to you because there's going to be something, um, very, very, uh, magnetic about your connection with this person. I feel like you're going to hit it off very naturally. Things are going to just feel very organic or very destined um, in the way that it may take place. Maybe in the way that you meet this person, it will just feel like it was divine timing or it was divinely ordained or something very spiritual about this connection. Maybe you're going to have a very deep conversation with this person to discover that there's a lot of similarities or commonalities. Uh, maybe you grew up in the same, you know, um, in the same city and you're meeting them in a whole other city. You know what I'm talking about? Like, it's just going to be something that's a very beautiful connection. And with this 56 relationship change, there's definitely going to be this, you know, um, this agreed upon, um, you know, gesture to take things to the next level. So I feel like whoever you're attracting to your spirit is saying that this is your equal and you're going to have someone that you're going to have an equal exchange of give and take. And it's not going to be where you're just giving, 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 and then feeling, you know, emotionally bankrupt or depleted as I was feeling because you're dealing with a narcissist or you're dealing with someone who doesn't have the ability or capacity to love you because they lack self-love and they're still in their dark night of the soul journey, still dealing with a lot of karmic um, debts that they need to pay you off. So you are now, you know, cutting yourself free from that thing that could have been trying to hold you back and hold you from your happiness. And you're going to attract exactly what you are. And this is going to lead because I was picking up marriage with this number five change because the five could deal with, you know, institutions and things of that nature as well, which can include marriage. Um, but 11 is also the justice card. So I do feel you're getting your just due, especially with the eights showing up. And I just felt like, you know, those seeds that you've sowed, they're now you know, um, reaping, you know, a beautiful reward of everything that you deserve, whether it be in love, whether it be in business, whether it be in your career, um, whether it just be in your health and wellness, I feel like there's a lot of blessings or answered prayers and petitions that you all are receiving right now. And with follow your dreams, this is going to inspire you or you felt inspired and motivated and encouraged to start, you know, living your truth and not, you know, uh, living in the shadows of someone else. I feel like like you're absolutely going to, you know, start pursuing your dreams if you haven't already. And underneath that, we have creativity. So many of you are tapping into your divinity as that divine feminine and divine masculine. And you are going to, you know, start reaping what you sow. Um, in terms of even your creative gifts, uh, you are going to be very successful. I'm hearing the word fruitful. So your creativity is your divinity. So tapping into your artistry or your creativity is going to garner a lot of wealth wealth and abundance that we saw. And there goes that 20, I mean that 57 yet again, teaching and learning. And then we have 81 leadership. And then we also have this 27, which is spiritual partnership. So many of you are coming into a divine, divine connection with leadership. This is the role that you've had to take. You took your power back. Um, you took your power back and you're now standing erect and that always makes you more attractive. When you love yourself, you are always more attractive. Um, and even when you're a leader, that's, that's that divine feminine, divine masculine energy, um, because they rule empires. So you are someone that someone can see themselves kind of, you know, um, courting and not only courting, but being with long-term because you have all of those qualities perhaps that they were uh, looking for in um, a partner and you possess them. So it's a very spiritual connection that I'm picking up. So let's get some messages from the, um, this is the Egyptian uh, God's Oracle deck. Let me see what we have. Can you all come out please? Come out and play, yay. All right, so what's on the bottom of the deck? And we have transformation. <laughs> I can't make this up. So transformation is the 11th card in this deck. So remember, we pulled out 11, 11. So that's just double confirmation that you all have gone through some sort of startling metamorphosis. I was speaking to a rebirth and then that rebirth card showed up. I was also speaking to you transforming. And then we saw the 13, the death card, um, 
or the 13 represents death in traditional tarot. On the split, we have wise dome. And I said, you all have grown wiser. That's the personal growth for me. Whenever you see a bunch of sevens, I just feel like you're in your crown energy, which means that you have a very deep and profound uh, connection to your higher self, to your, your tapped in, you know, to that God frequency. So you may have a lot of downloads. You may have a lot of lucid dreams. You may know how to astro travel. You may know how to master master manifest. You may set intention. You have a very beautiful connection with your angels. You may have an altar and you may commune with them and communicate with them via your altar. But this is saying that you're wise, you know, in a divine feminine, the empress and the emperor energy are very wise because you learn from your experiences. So in order for you to obtain the wise dome, you've had to heal. So in order to you know, now love yourself or know thyself, you have to first heal thyself and then you learn to love thyself. And when you love thyself, you then know thyself. So I feel like that's where you are now. You have wise dome because you have done the necessary work. I absolutely feel that transformation. You've emerged someone very, very powerful, someone very strong. That's why that number eight was the um, opening messages. Cause I do feel like, you know, even as I said, you may be strong spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and, and or physically, but there's this strength, you know, that you exude and it's very, you know, admirable to be honest. So we have, um, still this transformation. So that is definitely showing me that you're getting your just due, uh, because you didn't shy away from the work that was necessary for you to transform, for you to, you know, kind of emerge someone different. You've kind of, you know, took it on the chin. If you, you know, if you will, you, you, you kind of, um, just did what you had to do to continue in this process of learning and growing. And um, although it may have been difficult, um, it did not deter you. It did not stop you. So that is a very resilient energy. So let's tap in. So spirit, what messages do you have for my beloved Scorpios? Let me get a message of peace, power, and protection. Spirit, what messages do you have from this comedic deck? Such tiny cards, it's just like all right, all right. So there's a couple that are here. So whenever things get left behind, I feel like those are messages that chose themselves. And we still have wise dome on the bottom of the deck after all of that shuffling. So you're definitely in an energy of you know power. I just get someone very wise, someone very grounded. You may be the type of person that, you know, people in your cipher are constantly like seeking advice or constantly looking to you, um, you know, for some, some inspiration, you know, maybe you inspire people and you don't even know it, but I do feel like you possess a wisdom, you know, um, very uniquely because of your experiences, you know, you're not out here faking the funk and acting like a false prophet because you've been through these things, 46, 46, 10, 10. So that 10, 10 breaks down to 20. So many of you, you're getting your just due. I definitely feel like there were a lot of karmic situations, hence this karmic completion card that you've had to navigate. And now that you have reached the end of that cycle, you have been able to obtain that wise dome um, because wise dome is the application of the knowledge you've obtained through your experiences. So you are now someone that others may be looking to because we saw that teaching and learning card several times. Um, so you could be the student and the teacher at the same time. And it seems that you absolutely was that. And so you may have inspired a lot of people, but others see you as very wise. I feel like you've gained a lot of wise dome um, through your experiences as well. So what we have that came out is we have the... Um, this is resentment. So maybe many of you could have been very resentful because of what you've experienced. This is the number eight. So that was some of the karmic energies. You could have been dealing with someone who has some, you know, resentment towards you, which is why you had to kind of make some changes and get away from that energy. Seth is like, you know, a very dark energy, um, you know, very similar. You know, I don't want to say what it's similar to because I don't want to misspeak, but this, this eight energy is very karmic, you know, and, and I feel like there were some lessons that you've had to learn. Many of you could have had, you know, carried some resentments and animosity, uh, towards, you know, that person that could have kind of gaslit you and was narcissistic, or this could just speak to you, you know, kind of making some changes in your life because you were dealing with someone that was resentful. So you could have walked away 
from said relationships. Either way, this eight and five is 13. So there was a death. There was a demise of a relationship. And it was because you were dealing with someone who resented you. So this is someone that could have resented you um, because they were deflecting and perhaps projecting some of their insecurities onto you, which is why they could have tried to disempower you, control you, um, gaslight you, manipulate you. Those are the tactics that um, broken people resort to uh, because they don't have the capacity, as I said, or the autonomy to love you right. So they will resort to doing what they know best, which is to be in that dark energy. And so I feel like this, this resentment um, is from the person that you may have walked away from. Um, someone may resent you because of the changes that you've made. You know, you have completely transformed. And so this is making someone feel a lot of anger and it's because maybe they cannot pull those same tactics um, on you that they may have been able to in the past. Uh, so this is a very interesting energy. Next we have the, um, what is that? Complete, completeness. So we have completeness here. So you have complete, see that? So you are in the space where you are, you know, very content with where you are. You feel the sense, like I said, of like harmony. You know, because completeness to me is like almost wholeness, you know, um, and this number, what is that? The number 36. So that's nine. So that's what's changed a situation because completeness is like something is done, done, fit. So this self-discipline is what was like the nail, you know, almost like that straw that broke the camel's back. So because you've gone through this transformation and you now feel you know, like you have the sense of self-love, self-worth, self-value, which is self-discipline, all encompassing. So now there's this sense of completeness, like you have completed this cycle. And so this person, whomever you are dealing with, there is this energy of, you know, like, um, it's like they're in some sort of like, uh, competitive, you know, there's this competitiveness that I'm picking up on and it's because you've chosen to walk away because I was getting you walking away from like a karmic making a decision, especially with the eight, which deals with, you know, the karmic, what goes around, comes back around again. Um, but it's also the eight. I'm seeing like the eight of cups walking away from those connections that no longer serve you emotionally or you feel like you're bankrupt. You feel like you're depleted. You feel like there's not enough give and take. And so with this completeness, you're you're finally content um, with being alone, with being single or with the decisions that you made. And you're not looking back. Completeness is like you're done. You know, this is the cycle is completed and you're no longer looking back or looking to repair um, or reconcile with a situation or with a person rather. And so next we have creation. So you're birthing new ideas, you know, you're in this energy of like that umi, you know, that, that uni, that baba, um, that maternal or paternal energy. What we have playing on the playlist is astral traveling. So as I said, some of you all may be astral travelers. Uh, you may know how to tap into your, you know, your spirituality in a way where you can kind of travel and visit people or other people may be doing this with you. Someone's name may be Lani. Um, we have Liston, Lonnie Liston, um, Smith. So someone's name could be Lonnie or Smith or um, Liston, um, first, middle, or last. Uh, but I do get a sense of some of you could be that gifted where you know how to astral travel. Maybe you were astral traveling a lot when you were younger, and some of you could be trying to tap back into that energy. Um, I know when I was younger, I used to know how to astral travel. Like I have very like vivid memories of like visiting friends, you know, like, like seeing them, you know, and hearing conversations. I don't know if some of you all like noticed that like back in the days we used to have deja vu like every other day. Be like, damn, I've seen this before. Damn. But it's like whatever they're doing to the atmosphere, whatever they're doing to the food and, you know, poisoning the foods. And it, it's like literally taking away those powers. But if you really, you know, hone those gifts, um, you can, you, you know, you could pick it up again, but I feel some of you could be going back to that. Like maybe some of you are truly trying to learn or tap into that ability to astral travel, or you're tapping into those spiritual gifts that you may have not utilized in quite some time. But the card that actually uh, flew out is creation, as I said. So many of you are like tapping into your divinity of birthing new ideas, new ways of thinking. Some of you all could be like birthing a baby. You could be finding out that you're pregnant. Um, you may be finding out that um, something, some skill, some gift that you've been honing 
Um, you know, it's, it's absolutely like something that you're like working hard on. Cause I'm just getting like, you know, like you, some of y'all are working too hard on something, you know, maybe this is affecting your health. Maybe you're not getting enough rest. You know, maybe this is just you kind of being, you know, a little, um, I'm hearing fatigued and it's because you're so busy trying to, you know, manifest something or trying to birth some new idea. I feel like spirit is saying, you know, um, that there's some decisions, you know, maybe you're, you're trying to, trying to make a decision on, uh, some particular idea and spirit, spirit's main thing is like, you know, make, make a decision that's not going to be like, it's not going to add more stress into your life. Cause I feel like some of you all might be a little stressed out because with this eight, I'm also getting like the eight of swords. So, you know, you could be kind of like up in your head, stressing, overworking or overthinking, um, certain situations in spirit is saying, just kind of like, you know, kind of be, be with the energy, like sit with the energy, uh, maybe meditate, contemplate. Cause the two is giving me, you know, just, it, 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 you need to make a decision, but in order to make, you know, a sound decision, you may need to contemplate on it or go into a meditative state, you know, maybe ask your higher self to give you a sign, call on your angels. But I definitely get a sense of like, you know, just, you know, consulting with your higher self even, um, but definitely, you know, give it a moment, you know, so that you could get to, you know, the right, um, cause of action, you know, the right, um, action to take, I should say. And this is not, um, this is, this is 10, this reduces to 10. So with that 10, yeah, I think this has to do with an ending. I think it has to do with you doing something. But in order for you to do it, you have to walk away from something else or something else has to end it in order for something new to begin, which is what we all know anyway. So why is this 10 um, karmic completion here for what's hidden in the energy for my beloved Scorpios? I'm going to get a message of peace. Thank you. That jumped out. What is this? And so we have, um, ooh, look at that, devastation devastation that's why it ended because you were devastated this is the number three and i'm getting the three of swords immediately so i'm definitely feeling like either you were devastated in the situation or whether you realist realize this or not there's a divine masculine because this 10 and this this um 30 reduces to 40 which reduces to four so someone could be like devastated at the loss of you or devastated that you're walking away but this is someone very egotistical i feel like this is not someone who takes accountability you know, I definitely get a sense of this being someone who has had um, a lot to do with a lot of the pain that you may have had to deal with. Because I see that this person has caused a lot of pain and hence this being a karmic completion because they may now be getting, you know, kind of swallowing the pill that they were forcing down your throat. So they're, go being, they're kind of going through something that they put you through. That's the laws of karma. What you put out there in the universe, you're going to get it back. Because my mama aunt has everyone's address. So this person may be experiencing something karmically. And it may, it may be very painful because spirit is saying they're devastated. This could have also been just you, you know, in a state of devastation after, you know, this karmic cycle. But now, you know, as I said, this ending is going to bring in a happy ending as we saw earlier so you may have been in a very dark period very gloomy i was picking up a lot of tears a lot of lies and deception and just you know just a very narcissistic energy and now you're coming out of that you know the out of that um that illusion what's on the bottom of the deck we have healing again so this is what you focused on in order to love thyself or know thyself. You have to heal thyself. And that 33 reduces to six. So that's what led to your healing is just intuitively and innately knowing, you know, that something is not serving your highest good. Best thing you could do is to walk away from it and love yourself. Because if someone is not loving you the way you deserve to be loved, then it's not love. You know what I'm saying? And if they don't have the ability to love you, you know, then, then that too is something that you, you're responsible for loving yourself. So it's either you let somebody treat you like dog ish, or you're going to walk away and teach people how to treat you better. And by walking away, that's exactly what you do. So with this healing energy, I do feel like you walked away and you focused on healing yourself because you may have realized or discovered that in order for you to have attracted that type of energy, there may have been some things that were broken in you that you needed to repair, heal, and, you know, purge. And that's exactly what you did. So let's tap in. Why is this 74? 
nature and this 56 relationship change here for the outcome. Thank you, spirit. So this card is kind of sticking out and I want to take this one as well. And there was a card that flew out bottom of the deck. We have wise dome yet again. I love this. So back at the wisdom card, 31, four, very stable, very self-sufficient. This could be a divine masculine that's coming in. That's going to match your fly now, you know, because when you do the work, you're going to attract what you are. I feel your vibration is completely changed. I definitely feel like you're in your bag now, you know, whereas in the past you were learning, you know, you were learning who you are. You were learning why you are. And now you know who you are. So the card that flew out is we have the protection card. So many of you are definitely protected, protecting from the angels, you know, with this 35. I do feel like you have a wish fulfillment that's coming in and it's protected. It's like spirit is saying you're going to get this regardless. That eight is what we started off the reading. And this is the card that is um, clarifying you know, um, the outcome. So with the 74, there's a wish fulfillment that's coming in and this is the divinely protected or divinely ordained, you know, gift. And I see this beautiful sun on the crown of this, um, on the crown of Mehen. What's the name of this deity? Mehen, Mehen, you know, so this, this represents the sun, you know, so that's just speaking to like clarity. Maybe someone's going to have this grand epiphany because I, we saw that 12, the teaching and learning. So you could have someone that's learning at the same time you're learning. And so this is someone that's going to appreciate all of these things that you, you know, that you, um, that you, uh, represent, you know, all of your characteristics, all of the attributes, you know, they're going to appreciate that. But I do feel like with this protection card, you are divinely protected. I feel like you also receive a lot of divine downloads, you know, because the, you're, you're getting some sort of guidance here. You know, and I see the snake and snakes represent change as well. Um, I do feel like because you've made the necessary changes, you know, and it's also like, you know, because you have like your, your, you, you've, um, you've shed a lot of, you know, some of those faulty belief systems and, and you shed it, you know, you may have shed, um, not just shed, but you kind of, it's like, um, you cut yourself free from the things that weren't serving you, including those people from the past. So with that eight, I'm getting like the karmic with someone that you had to, you know, be protected from because maybe they had some, some ill intention, you know, and he's, in a boat, which means that you distance yourself. So that's like you moving on to protect your energy, protect your peace, to create the safe space or the safe, the sanctuary for yourself. And you're divinely protected. The next card we have is we have hope. So what did I say about you maintaining that hope and optimism? Knowing that something better is out there for you. With the 22, you had trusted your intuition because remember the, in the numerology deck, 22 was um, intuition. So you trusted your gumption, your intuition, and that's what tell, told you to kind of move forward, to move on, um, to leave something behind. I do feel like you are um, also very hopeful when it comes to love, when it comes to um when it comes to, you know, your love partnerships, or even when it just comes to, you know, your future, I feel like you, you weren't downtrodden behind, um, what may have took place in a former relationship. Like that didn't like make you the type of person that was like, I don't want a man. I don't want a woman. I, like you didn't become someone bitter, like behind the demise of a relationship. I feel like you really made it your business to really heal yourself, really work on yourself. So as not to, repeat, you know, the same scenario or the same situation over and over and over again, which is what so many people do because they refuse to do the work because the work is hard. You know, it's not easy. <laughs> it isn't easy. It isn't meant to be easy, you know, or else everyone would be just walking around here. Um, you know, just, it, it's just not meant to be easy. You know, I'd prefer to have to do the work and, and sincerely genuinely do the work than to be walking around with a mask and pretending to be something I'm not. I feel that's far more difficult than to actually do the work because I, I see it every day where people just sit on their, their soap boxes and act like they have all the answers, but they're broken. You know, they're truly broken. They're broken and not broken because I said so, but broken by the things that fly out of their mouth. 
um, broken by the way that they treat other people broken by, it's just so many different ways. So it's just like, it's, it, it just makes more sense to work on yourself. That's why we're here anyway. So you could fool anybody else, but you can't fool the most high, you know, and you can't fool, you know, universal law. Like you're going to attract what you are. So as long as you're broken, you're going to constantly attract that same low vibrational energy. So the bottom of the deck is the wise dome. This is what I feel many of you have um, graduated to this level of just having a deeper, more profound understanding um, of your life, of, you know, what you desire, of, you know, what you deserve, you know, of your experience. You're just more, um, you're more, um, you're more experienced now, if you will. So let's get some messages from a deck that I created, Beautiful Souls. See what we got here. So on the bottom of the deck, it was upside down. And it says, you are uniquely made, beautiful soul. So many of you are very unique. We already know that. Scorpios typically are like rare breeds. You know, some of you all grew up as, you know, that black sheep, white sheep of other family. You know, you grew up as someone who was like misunderstood, Mr. Understood. Um, you know, people thought you were weirdos and, and it's like now you're just embracing your weirdness. You're just, you know, embracing it and what that's what makes you unique. So it's a very beautiful energy um, that others are starting to appreciate and value that they may have, you know, kind of overlooked in the past. What's playing now is Feeling Good by Nina Simone. So many of you are definitely feeling good about who you are and about where you are in your life. Because I do feel a lot has changed, especially with, you know, this uh, change card and then the resentment. So someone could be resenting that you feel good. Someone's name could be Nina or Simone, first, middle, or last. So with feels good, you feel, you know, things are feeling good for you and someone is pissed off that you're in a space where you're feeling good, where things may be going good for you. Um, and, and I showed you feels good by Tony, 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 but before that was Nina Simone. And I just want to show you that because that's what I was referencing. And so the song that's playing after that it feels good, which is very funny <laughs> because now that's Tony, Tony, Tony. Some of y'all could be dealing with someone named Tony, but I feel like that's what someone is very resentful of. They're, they're mad that you're not sitting in the house crying and damn near on your deathbed because they left or because they played you or because they was duping you. You woke up. It's like you woke up from the illusion. You pulled the veil from the eyes. You took the rose colored glasses off and you now see things for what they truly are and not for what someone's trying to convince you it was. And so now they resent you because you're no longer boo-boo the fool or you're no, no longer that person that they were um, easily, you know, um, manipulating. You know, so this is someone who's like, like I said, misplaced anger. Um, I mean, I have said that, but that's what I heard earlier and I never expounded on that energy. So let's tap in. So why is this five change and the resentment card number eight here for the overall energy. Let me get a message of peace, power, and protection. Thank you. I can't make this up. Look what shows up. And I'm going to take these two because they're sticking out. So the card that flew out, flighty in and out. Impulsive, unreliable. So this is that person that was playing a lot of games that was very pissed off. Very pissed off because you have moved on. And the funny thing about it is they're mad at you because you stood your ground. You stood erect. And you said, you know what? No more. I'm, I'm not playing these little games. So this is someone that was not very reliable. This is someone that had other suitors, perhaps. They had other people in their ear. But this was also someone very competitive, you know, in a competition, whether secretly, you know, this is to me like someone who has um, some ill intention or ill will. And this is that same energy I was getting of someone that was like ghosting, disappear, and then pops up and then acts like they don't owe you um, any type of explanation as to where they were, why they disappear, or even to, you know, kind of iron out things that may have led to the disappearing act. It's like they res they refuse to take accountability. So this is someone that thought that they could just come and go as they please until you set boundaries and you started to change. Because the five and the eight, you changed based off the way that they treated you. So they thought that they was going to be able to continue to mistreat you and you were going to continue to take their mistreatment until you said, nah, I'm done. And you transform. Um, what's on the bottom of the deck is I don't F with you. So this is someone that don't really F with you, but they're trying to convince you that they do. But this is a very beguiling, manipulative energy. So as I said, they will do things and say things that they really don't need just 
for the sole basis of trying to dupe you into believing that they have your best interest at heart somehow. And so maybe in the past that used to work, maybe they say certain things that they know um, you may want to hear, or they may make certain gestures that might seem um, sincere, but it's all just a ploy to get you to fall into the trap of trusting them again and, and laying, you know, putting down your boundaries. But this is someone that really don't F with you. And so now you're returning the gesture and you're not effing with them because you feel too good. You don't need this type of janky energy. And what did I just say about you being a rare bleed, breed? You know, some of y'all were the black sheep or the white sheep of the family, misunderstood or misunderstood. So this is why um, you have this energy that is very resentful because you actually did the work. You could tell that you're someone who doesn't just talk about it. You are about it. And they may be the very opposite of that. They just talk, 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 and they don't show and prove nothing. And so they're very much in some sort of secret competition with you because you tend to manifest the things that you said you're going to manifest. So you tend to stand in this power of being righteous and doing things just, whereas they have to go around and lie um, to kick it. You know what I'm talking about? And so now this person is very resentful because you may have boundaries and they do not know how to penetrate said boundaries. And you're also very protected because you're highly intuitive. So you know when they're duping you, you know when they're coming around playing games. And because you're in such a high vibration, you're very protective and you're not allowing anyone uh, to come in. So with the next cards, we have the four walls are closing in on you. Get out of the house now and take a walk. So this is another card that is clarifying this energy. So someone could be very depressed. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting a sense of someone that's just kind of stuck and stagnant. You know, this could be someone very complacent. This could be someone discontent, someone bored, or someone that's just simply depressed and agonizing over another person. And this is what's leading to them, you know, having these secret plots and trying to, you know, um, manipulate or uh, trying to, you know, calculate and, and, and be calculating in some way. So it's like, you know, they need to kind of clear their mind because it's obvious that there is some confusion here. Um, it could be very well even be delusion. Uh, maybe some of you all, you know, may have taken, um, you know, that um, necessary time to go out in nature so that you can receive, you know, some sort of download or some sort of clarity. You know, whenever you get out in nature, it always cleanses your energy. It's a, a quick and sure way to bring about some sort of clarity or some sort of epiphany. Um, Katara is down here playing with plastic bags. Um, so what we have here is it says, don't be compl I cannot make this up. I cannot make this up. It says, don't be complacent. Go out and get what you want, what you desire. So maybe that's what you all were doing. We're settling in this relationship and they may have had you in a, you know, in a state of depression dealing with them because that's what a narcissist does. It was just one, 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 one. So that is five. And that's the same energy here. That's what led to your said change is because you were dealing with someone who was very manipulative, very conniving, and it left you feeling very, you know, depleted. It left you feeling um, depressed. Um, you even felt stuck and stagnant. Some of you all didn't even leave the home, didn't leave the house. Maybe this is someone that was like super um, controlling and they was, didn't let you go out with your friends or they kind of, you know, whenever you're in a, a toxic relationship, check for the, the ones that try to keep you from your friends and your family. Whenever, if you're in a relationship with someone and they don't ever want you to be around your own family or you have friends that you don't, you know, came into the relationship with and now all of a sudden you don't have no friends, that is a toxic, toxic relationship. And that is a controlling person. And it's a very calculating way to isolate you from people that you love because if your people that you love are in the, the situation with you, they're going to be able to advise you to leave that person. So they try to isolate you because it's easier to manipulate and control someone. And so that's what I feel you were dealing with is someone that kind of came into your life and then slowly but surely isolated you even from like your closest loved ones, relatives, even your mother, your father. Um, and that was because that was their way of, you know, gaining control of this relationship and manipulating you in a way where, um, you know, it could have led you to depression. Um, what we have right now is, uh, who is this? It says night shift, the Commodores, 
So someone could have been working the night shift. Maybe this person was saying they was working the night shift. And in fact, they may have been, um, you know, they may have been, you know, doing other things during the night shift because, you know, that, that graveyard shift, that overnight shift, you know, there'd be a whole lot of cheating going on, trust and believe, you know, uh, so that could have been something that was going on. Maybe some of you all work that third shift or that second shift, whatever the case may be, we're about to pull a card for, um, who or what you're attracting to you. Um, so some of y'all could be just like kind of working, um, like I said, overworking double, you know, you could be doing like doubles right now. Um, and it's just like, you know, you really need to take some time to kind of like prioritize yourself or have some sort of work life balance is what I'm getting as well. So let's tap in. Why is this 41 self-discipline and this, um, this completion card here for our beloved Scorpios for who or what they're attracting to them? And on the bottom of the deck, we have warrior spirit. You divide, defy the odds. So many of you are definitely warriors. It takes a warrior. I was picking up like you were very strong. And, um, you know, you had to turn that pain into power. The card that showed up is emotional intelligence. It says attentive, affectionate, loving, protective, honest, communicative, loyal, and transparent. And these are all of the things that you had to tap into. So you were not always emotionally intelligent because if you were in a relationship where someone was controlling you or manipulating you, then you weren't necessarily picking up on the red flags that you needed to. But now that you are in this energy of self-discipline, which is all encompassing, of self-love, self-worth, self-value. Now you have um, graduated to the self-mastery of emotional intelligence, which is your love language, which is who Scorpios or water signs, I should say in general, should be. You should all be emotionally intelligent as a water sign. Um, so that's a very powerful energy. But you tapped into that, that strength. Um, because when I think of a warrior, I think of someone who is um, you know, it's a powerhouse. It's someone who, um, uh, is not going to like back down someone very brave. Um, and this is someone who will, um, you know, fight for their respect, fight for what's right, stand their ground, you know, so this is a very beautiful energy. So with that night shift, um, many of you could have confronted someone, um, you know, you could have confronted someone about, you know, maybe perhaps the way that they were treating you or maybe about some things that you did not, you know, necessarily um, agree with. And that was what led to you kind of ending a situation because that number 36 reduces to nine, which is the highest number in vibration of change as well. Um, so that shows that there was, you know, some sort of self-reflection because the nine is also like that hermit energy. So you could have sat with something for a while before you made the decision to, you know, to finally end it or commotion, um, to complete it. And it's because you were in a space of emotional intelligence. You didn't allow, um, you know, what you were feeling to sway uh, a decision that you knew would best serve you ultimately. So that's powerful. So very strong very powerful person. So why is this 71 here uh, of health and the um, creation card for how this person you're attracting or what you're attracting to you feels about you? Thank you, spirit. So this card fell. Let's get it. And so we have, um, what does that say? Oh, it says, as a bocce, ward off any demonic energies. And remember, we had the protection card show up. So you do have some folks that was doing some voodoo, juju, -ju hoodoo, it could have been a mistress. And it says, mistress is what they call me. And I answer to it, no shame. So some of you all were dealing with someone, like I said, with that night shift song that was playing by the Commodores. Um, it, sem it seemed like someone was creeping at night, so they could have been telling you they were going to work. Some of them didn't even have a night shift position. This is just someone that was telling you, oh, I'm getting extra hours or I'm working overtime. And what they could have been doing was just creeping, you know, because with this mistress, and, we, and underneath that is incubus. And then we got, you ain't got to lie, Craig. And so they may have done all of this, which led to you walking away and leaving a situation behind. And it took a warrior. It took someone very strong and, um, you know, independent to walk away from a situation like this. So you were dealing with someone who had some strong sexual ties to some sort of mistress. So this is someone that could have been, you know, dealing with a sex gin or a charlatan or whatever you call, you know, like this is that type of energy. And then they would come to you and lie in your face and tell you, you know, um, 
that they was at work all day. You know what I'm saying? And whoever they was dealing with could have knew about you and they, they was still creeping and sleeping, you know, and they had no shame at all. But with that night shift, I definitely feel like there was some, some sort of um, negative energy. And this could have affected your health. Maybe someone was, because um, you know, when you sleep with someone, that's a very intimate thing, but it's also a way to exchange energies because energy is transferable. It is not destroyable. So you could have laid with someone, slept with someone, was, was intimate with someone who was dealing with incubus energy, gin energy, and that could have been transferred to you and it could have affected you, um, your health. You know, you could have fallen ill. Um, you know, for many of you, maybe, you know, you may have started cramping. Some of y'all could have caught an STD. Something could have happened, but I feel like spirit said, you know, may have told you that it's time, um, you know, to cleanse yourself, to clear yourself of that energy, um, and not be ignorant, um, or, you know, move in blind ignorance, I should say, uh, trust your spirit and trust what you felt. And I feel like that's what led to you, you know, ultimately walking away. But with this creation, someone could have also, um, you know, got someone pregnant, um, is what I'm getting. And with this, you know, as a batchy, someone could have, you know, bewitched another person because they were trying to take another person from set from you. Or, you know, whatever the case may be, I feel like spirit is just telling you it's time to, like, you have to protect yourself. Some of you all may have some sort of mistress, and this could be a feminine um, that is very jealous, someone that knows about you, that could be very, very much um, looking at you as a threat because maybe they know that their person, um, the person that, you know, they were creeping with still has some sort of feelings or unresolved, you know, feelings or some emotion or some connection to you, Um and they're jealous. I just get jealous and envious. Uh, what we have is uh, Jodeci and it says, I'm still waiting. So someone is still waiting. So this person is still waiting for another person perhaps to commit. Some of y'all could have been waiting for this person to be honest or to be, you know, transparent. Let me get one more message for why this Azabachi is here for 71 Health. But I do feel like someone was doing some voodoo juju, hoodoo, santeria, some black magic, you know, some witch work, you know, ritual work or spell work on an, on you, um, Scorpios, or attempting to, which is why you have this protection card here. Um, because, you know, what you don't see, you know, spirit sees, your angels, your, you know, the most high God sees. And I definitely am getting a sense with I'm still waiting. Like someone's waiting for the results of whatever spell they may have done to take effect. And I feel because you're protected um, it has not. So these three cards have come out because I asked for clarification of this Azabachi. Many of you could be, you know, wearing Azabachi, could be wearing um, jet. You know, jet is another word for Azabachi. It's a stone. It's a um, another mineral. So what we have is redemption. So someone is definitely mad that you have, you know, gotten back up on your feet and you're standing erect and you're in your control. You're in control of your own life. And your redemption is like, it's like, it's, it's eating them alive. They have this, that's why they carry all of this animosity and resentment towards you. Because as I said, it's like you, you have overcome, um, whatever it was, you know, whatever this, this confusing energy was, and we have you and me. So many of you are coming into a beautiful love ship. That's another reason why they are, uh, you know, trying to block, they could be trying to block love from coming in. Maybe someone did a love spell, um, to try to, you know, keep someone like a, commanding spell or, you know, come to me, whatever it is, like they did something to try to, um, block love from coming toward you or coming. Um, hmm, interesting. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting. But with this, you plus me, I just feel like you're in harmony. I feel like you're going to come into a beautiful connection with someone. I feel someone also is realizing like they love you, um, but they just don't know how to show love. They have no capacity or no ability to show love because I feel like they are a troubled soul. I get a very dark, dark person, someone that has a lot of healing to do. And look at that. It says protection from secret enemies. So you got protection twice. So as I said, many of you are protected. You have a lot of angels and guides that has been coming out of many readings. A lot of 333s and 444s have showed up in all of your readings, even in the former reading, 333 and 444 showed up. But this is showing us that, you know, this is the same symbol as this back here. See that? It's the same thing. So many of you have, you know, hidden enemies, secret enemies that you don't even know about, but your angels do. Like I said, they're hearing conversations that you don't even hear and they're protecting you from them. They're seeing people throwing ish at you that you don't even know about, but it's like, ding, bing, it's like ricochet because you got a 
fiery, impenetrable force field shield armor of protection around you. So you are protected from said enemies, which is why you had this here as a batchy ward off. So many of you could be wearing very um, like protective am amulet amulets and jewelry and oils. Um, you may be doing certain things to protect yourself and to garner um, a circle of protection. But this is what, um, you know, how they feel about you is you are a very protected person. So what we have here on the bottom of the deck, this is beautiful. And this is the success card. So many of you are, they have, you have folks that are jealous because, you know, even though you've been through the storm, you've been through the fire, it's like you're coming out unscathed. Um, you are definitely going to, you know, receive all of that success. Remember, we started the reading with 88 abundance. So it's just like things are blossoming for you regardless of, you know, whatever someone could be th doing to sabotage or to thwart your plans. It's like you're going to be successful regardless. And this just is showing like whether it be, you know, wish fulfillment, whether it be in the form of a job or whether it be in the form of some sort of inventions, investments, um, your own manifestations. It's just like something is coming through. And I feel it's going to be, you know, almost like it's a reward based off of you closing out a said chapter, closing out, you know, um, this cycle or just closing the door as Teddy P was singing earlier. Um, and someone is going to be very devastated. I feel someone's very devastated and jealous because the things that they thought they were going to do to keep you bound to them or keep you anchored or attached or stuck to them at the hip, um, you know, whatever this cord or whatever, what they, whatever they were doing, I think that they foolishly thought that you were always going to be there. And now they're realizing, um, that the jig is up. You know what I'm talking about? Like the jig is up and this is leaving them devastated. So you're going to be successful. So this is also like another form of them having to kind of, you know, their karma is to watch you succeed, is to watch you receive some sort of fortune, some sort of, you know, success, some sort of blessing. So why is this 10 karma completion and devastation here for what's hidden? And my nose is itching like crazy. And so that means I am right on the nose of the message. Thank you, spirit. So why is this 10 karma completion and this um, devastation part of me? And we have twin flame here. So this is what they're going to be devastated about because you're coming into a divine union. Mind you, we have the 1111, which is the number for twin flame. So this is what you are attracting to you. It says a house of mirrors, uh, commonalities and interests. Um, values, strengths, hope. Um, this is also aspirations um, and vulnerabilities, dreams. So whoever you're attracting to you, you both will share those same commonalities. The card that actually flew out to clarify this 10 completion and devastation is um, knowing is half the battle. Now you must apply. And what did I say about you dealing with someone who, you know, is it's almost like they don't even have the autonomy um, or the capacity to love. You know, I feel like for you, you had to apply what you've learned. So knowledge is, you know, wis wise dome is the, the application of knowledge. So when you apply what you've learned, then you become wise. And mind you, we have seen wise dome on the bottom of this deck. Um, every single time we touched the deck, the, um, the Egyptian deck. I can't find it right now, but that, that wise dome. So that's just showing that you didn't just know you had to do better. You had to apply what you've learned. And now that's, what's making your whole situation better off because you've applied what you've learned, which is the application of knowledge that becomes wisdom. And that's why the cycle is closed. That's why the cycle is complete rather. And that's why, you know, you're leaving someone left devastated. And so this is a powerful energy. So knowing is half the battle. Now you must apply. So whatever you have learned, um, you may have known for a while, like I need to close this chapter. I need to walk away. And you finally did it. You closed the door to the person of your past. And now that's why you're going to have this beautiful new beginning and you're going to bump into someone that's on your frequency and vibration. Hence this beautiful 1111 energy um, where you're going to meet this person pray most likely in an outside setting or the connection is just going to feel a la natural. 
Um, this is going to be someone that will eventually become your counterpart, you know, because your relationship status is going to change. Many of you are single now. So if it's changing, that means it's going to change for the better, which means, like I said, I was seeing marriage, you know, I was definitely hearing marriage for some of you all. So why is the 74 nature, 56 relationship change, protection, and the hope card? Many of you have been very hopeful and optimistic about your love lives. Like I said, you didn't just go and turn into that bitter person because you was dealing with a narcissist or dealing with someone that was very cold-hearted, cold-blooded, or just very evil-spirited. Um, you just you worked on yourself because all you can change is you. You can't change anyone else. And that's what you focused on is changing yourself. So this four-page letter, and it says, these are my thoughts. Should I send it? Text delete. So this could very well be someone that you are familiar with. With this nature card, I get a sense of this being someone, like I said, that you may bump into in an outside setting. Maybe this is someone you've seen before in passing. Maybe you, you know, you may frequent the same grocery store, the gym, you may work at the same job, you may live in the same community, you may live in the same town, you may have gone to school with this person, you may be familiar with this person, I feel like a sense of like familiarity or like you may have, um, you know, established some sort of roots with this person. Um, what I have here is uh, emotionally checked out, not worth the headache. So that's what you were dealing with in your past. And I feel like that's why um, you're moving forward because you were dealing with someone that did not have that autonomy to love you in the way that you need to, needed to, or they did not speak your love language, you know? And if you are someone emotionally intelligent and you're dealing with someone who's emotionally checked out, then that is not going to work. And so that caused a lot of confusion in the connection. And ultimately it caused you to have to make that decision to walk away and to, um, you know, find what you deserve. So the next card, you got a, several that came out, uh, but you have someone that is perhaps trying to reach out. Like someone may text you, someone may call you randomly out of the blue uh, that you may not know. You know, maybe someone is, you know, literally scribing a letter or describing some sort of message and they want to send it, um, but they hold back from sending it. So, you know, this could be someone that could even be a secret admirer. Um, so we have family time, build, connect, check in. So many of you are, you know, re, you know, like re reconciling. Um, some of those relationships that could have been tarnished by that narcissist or by that toxic love partnership um, connection. Like you may have lost, um, you know, lost contact, lost contact with a lot of your loved ones because you were in a toxic relationship. As I said, they could have, you know, kind of drew a wedge um, in those relationships. And now you're in, you know, in you're, you're in the space where you're rebuilding or re, re um, you're um, recovering, you know, reconciling, recovering, repairing. Thank you, spirit. I was looking for a re re word and it was repair. So you're repairing those relationships. So you may be, you know, communicating more with your loved ones. You may be, you know, spending more time with them. Um, but I do feel like there's more of this rebuilding those connections. And that's a beautiful thing. So we have laws of attraction and it says manifesting your dreams, hopes, and reality or desires. And remember, you also pulled the hope card as well. So you are tapping in to your divinity, as I said, as that divine feminine, divine masculine. So you are a master manifester and you know as above, so below, as within, so without. You also know that you could utilize the elements around you. You could set that intention and draw in, call in, manifest whatever it is that you want, including love, because it seems like many of you have manifested this love. I feel like your dreams are coming true because you're standing in your truth and being your authentic self. We also have sacred space offerings honor your ancestors guide spirit team and as i said earlier you may be spending more time committing more time to build that connection that rapport with your ancestors and your angels maybe even connecting to your higher self to your spirit guides and that's really um opening up your crown so that you can really receive those downloads but i feel like you're also um holding a safe space um you know, for others, but you also have created a sacred space where you may have set up altars for your spiritual parents or for your deities. Um, you know, you may be giving offerings, you may purchase flowers or light candles and incense and provide water and libation, um, you know, for your ancestors when you're 
completing or manifesting um, said rituals or magic. So that's a beautiful energy. And then we have blocka, blocka, blocka. I think's not to. So you are blocking out anyone, anything that doesn't serve your highest good. I definitely feel like this is that person that is emotionally checked out. That's who you're blocking because that is not your love language. That is not what you're entertaining um, because you're very loving and giving and nurturing and caring and affectionate and attentive. And if someone is, you know, kind of um, distant and, and, and flighty and in and out, um, you, that's someone that you are not going to, um, you're not really going to have um, the patience for that type of energy because that is something that doesn't resonate with Scorpios. Like Scorpios are very, um, very much loving individuals, very caring of those individuals um, that they um, that they are dealing with. You're very protective. So when someone is treating you or mistreating you in such a way, very blatantly, because it feels very blatant. And I feel, as I said in the past, they may have gotten away with it, but now that you are in this divine feminine divine masculine energy you don't you're not you're not on that type of time uh what we have is saving all my love for you so you are saving all your love for someone that's worthy that's worthy of your love and i feel like that's what someone is doing for you as well because we got this two elevens and that's another mirror so you attract what you are and when you know who you are then you're going to attract someone that also uh, knows who they are and knows what their love language is and they're going to compliment you and you're going to compliment them so let's get some messages from regular tarot and then we're going to wrap it up so we have on the bottom of the deck knight of swords so there's a message that's rushing in someone could be rushing in you know after this is like someone feeling like <laughs> you know feeling like they missed some sort of opportunity feeling like dang i let a real one get away this card actually fell so i'm gonna take it so someone now has regret see this ace of cups they're realizing especially with saving all my love for you it's like you know now this is someone who's realizing um you know the love that you were offering that they weren't willing to accept and I feel like, as I said, they may have had a lot of other things kind of distracting them and they're left devastated. But this is a very immature energy because even in this card, you know, there's a lot of defensive body language, you know, a little pouting. You know, this is a little self-loathing going on. But I feel like they do realize that there's a missed opportunity here. And it's because now you're guarded, but you're guarded for right reasons. You're now protecting your heart. You done walked away from, you know, any toxicity. And now you realize the power in loving yourself. And you're enjoying that. You're saving all your love for someone that's going to be worthy. You're saving all your love for someone that is going to, you know, kind of match your fly and your vibration in that regard. And in the meantime, you're feeling very fulfilled emotionally because you've learned to pour into yourself. You've learned that love was an inside job. And so when you do attract someone, you're going to have something to offer them because you're coming from a, a healed place. You know, you've gone through some sort of purification process and you've been able to, you know, acquire you know this deeper more profound understanding um which has given you not only the emotional intelligence but also that self-discipline you know which is all encompassing of as i said earlier self-love so that is like the root of why you are smiling from ear to ear this is the me myself and day, my me myself and i card i call it the day law card because you're really you know focus on me myself and i that's the self so this is a beautiful beautiful energy scorpio so why is this 41 self discipline emotional intelligence and this um completeness so that's why you feel complete because you know you have completed a cycle of dealing with someone toxic that was not really um, treating you the way you deserved. We also have, um, who is this? We have Stevie Wonder. Oh, wow. Ribbon in the sky. So that's a beautiful energy. Yep. Did a card? I thought a card flew out. Did it? Nope. Okay. So why is this emotional? So Stevie Wonder. So someone is definitely like wondering. Maybe you're wondering. You may have some, some thoughts, some, you know, maybe some thoughts of, you know, what you what you're going to, you know, be in, what kind of connection you're going to be in in the future. Thank you, Spirit. Yeah, with wonder. So your wondering could have had you in this place of confusion. You know, as I said, um, with that emotional intelligence and completeness, I feel like, you know, there was a lot of, um, you know, uh, manipulation and gaslighting. But uh, you have to also take um, onus in participating in this because, this is also self-imposed as well. So someone could have also been saying things 
you know, but you also have to take in, you know, take accountability for allowing, um, you know, these, 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 um, these uh, manipulative tactics, um, you know, to kind of to to dupe you, you know. And when you started to look at things, when you removed the veil from your eyes, I feel like that's when you were able to realize, you know, like, okay, this is something that I really need to wrap up. And that led you to, you know, this place of having um, more emotional intelligence and become more self-disciplined because you're not being you know, led astray by someone who is just speaking idle words or speaking things. So what we have on the bottom of the deck is the Knight of Pentacles. So this is like a calculated um, offer, like someone who has taken their time because they want to get it right. Uh, with Ribbon in the Sky, this is very a beautiful store, um, song that a lot of people um, use in, in weddings, you know. So I was picking up the fact that some of you all could very much be, you know, proposed to or married. You may be getting married or you may have someone that may see you as someone that they want to, you know, kind of give you something tangible. This could be, you know, something as, as, as simple as like just an offer, you know, a, a very genuine, sincere offer, which could be or look like, you know, an engagement ring or maybe someone offering, you know, commitment of some sort. Um, but this is someone that's kind of really trying to, you know, take their time because they want to get it right. This is someone that really wants to uh, ground the connection, you know, and have it rooted in something real. Um, how they feel about you is the Seven of Pentacles. So that Seven of Pentacles is almost like this discontent energy. That's that same energy of like discontent and, and, and bored, not knowing what to do. But I do feel like this is also feeling a little bit unfulfilled. So maybe there's a little bit of, you know, you know, manifesting that you're tapping into. Maybe they see you as a master manifester. Um, maybe they see you as someone that they, you know, um, you know, would like to make an offer, but perhaps they just don't know how to, how to extend the offer, if you will, because they could be up in their head a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like with this 71 health, you know, that's always given like the eight of, eight of swords, as I said. And remember, we had that eight of swords here. And so maybe they're a little confused, a little conflicted, unsure. Um, but this could also be how they feel about you. Like maybe they feel like you are, you know, kind of like in your own zone where you're, um, you know, kind of self-sufficient, you know, but maybe they also see that you may not be necessarily interested in something new because maybe you're stuck in something that may have occurred in your past. So they want to give you that time, you know, to kind of heal and recover. Um, but this is still an energy of like someone who's in their power, you know, uh, someone who's definitely standing their ground or knows how to co-create with source. So why is, okay, I saw a card flip. I saw one. I thought I did. I thought I did, but maybe not. Bottom of the deck is still the Knight of Pentacles. Okay. So why is this? I want to get one more message for why this Knight of Pentacles is here. Clarifying the 71 health and this creation. Let me get one more message. Thank you. Oh, wow. There's a decision. See that? So, yeah, that's what it is. There's a little bit of confusion, as I said, trying to decide trying to, you know, kind of plan, prepare how to come towards you. And we have the hangman. Remember, I mentioned that earlier. So this is that grand epiphany, you know, um, realizing, okay, time to wrap up a cycle because, you know, this is not working for me. This is not honoring me. But this is also someone also having some sort of, um, you know, epiphany, some epiphanous moment. So this card, wow. So this came right back out. So this is the grand epiphany. The hangman is seeing something. You know, and this could be your energy realizing, okay, it's time to go. And when you made that decision or when you bust that dope move to move on, to leave something behind, I feel like that's what left someone devastated because I feel like, you know, with this knowing is half the battle. It's like, yeah, you, you finally saw, um, you know, what you need, needed to see um, with clarity. And so they're like, okay, now that you know what you're going to do about it, you know, no one is half the battle. Now you must apply. So when you looked at things from a different perspective and took that sacrificial position to do so, that's when you made the decision like, okay, it's time to, you know, wrap this cycle up. That's why that completeness card showed up because it was time, you know, and this is going to leave someone devastated because maybe they did not, um, you know, they didn't see it coming or they didn't think you had it in you 
to leave them behind. What we have playing right now is Prince, I Would Die For You. This is from the Purple Rain soundtrack. So you have, um, we're about to clarify the outcome energy. And the outcome, remember you have the 1111, the nature and the relationship change. So whoever you're attracting to you, they're going to be willing to die for you. This is like, you know, that's that partner. That's that lifelong partner. I get like someone that's definitely going to love you unconditionally. Um, this is someone who's also going to be like your safe place. This is someone that you've manifested. Um, this is someone that you are going to, you know, have a beautiful and sacred connection um, with I will die for you. I do feel like you're going to have someone that's a protector. For um, many of you, you may have been dealing with someone that was emotionally checked out because they had like a wandering eye. Um, someone very passionate, fiery. Maybe this is something that person would say to you, like, I would die for you. You know, I wouldn't let you hit the ground if I was falling myself. Like they would just say these little ridiculous quotables, but they didn't live by it um, because they were emotionally checked out. And now you're just blocking that energy. Um, the purple deals with the crown. So I do feel like, you know, if this person was able to get away with those things in the past and look what's here, you're the star. So that's your message right there. I was picking up that there was, you know, star energy because we saw 1717 and this is the, the star card. So you're a wish fulfillment. That's why you're getting your blessings and your just due. That's why spirit is saying like, you know, because you remained hopeful and optimistic, you know, that something beautiful was going to um, transpire and you're going to have an abundance of whatever it is because you are a co-creator. You know, you have turned your power, um, your pain into power. You have, you know, been able to even turn your vulnerabilities into a superpower, you know, but you have been very transparent, very real. I feel like you've done a lot of praying, a lot of, you know, sending up prayers, petitions, um, maybe doing daily mantras. Maybe you've been doing some sort of ritual work, but this is why um, your blessings are coming true. This is why spirit was saying that, you know, you're protected, you know, because whatever it is you're manifesting, um, you've earned it, you deserve it. And I feel like you are uh, going to be dealing with a lot of, you know, jealousy and envy because of it. Um, but this is what you have here. You were dealing with someone that was definitely juggling you, juggling other people. This also could be you juggling a lot. Um, and when someone's juggling multiple things, then they're going to be emotionally checked out because they don't have, you know, um, you know, their attention is kind of pulled in different directions. And that's why spirit is saying it's time to block, you know, the people, places and things that aren't serving you. Let me get one more message. So that star is saying wish fulfillment. Remember, we had the eight, eight abundance. So these two cards are sticking out and I'm going to take these. Thank you, spirit. So we have the five. I told you there was some competitive energy, and that's what you walked away from. You don't have time to be sleeping with the enemy or sleeping with someone that's jealous and envious, and you both are supposed to be, you know, a team. So this is what you was dealing with. This is not someone that's going to give to you equally if, uh, you know, it's a fight the whole time. So this is why spirit is saying blocka, blocka, blocka. I think snata. And that's why you're walking away. This is the same eight of cups that I was speaking to earlier. And what did I say about the two of cups coming into a very sacred union, especially with the seven, four, eleven, eleven. That eleven is the one in the one. This is two people who have worked on healing themselves. Therefore, they're fulfilled emotionally. They love themselves. They've done their healing. They've gotten back to one and they know thyself. So when you heal thyself, you love thyself, then you know thyself, then you have something to offer another person. And they're both offering a full cup. So that means you're not giving someone half of you, parsh, part of you. You're not bringing in baggage. You're giving them the best parts of you and they're doing the same. So this is that energy that could potentially grow into or develop into a love ship. And we have searching Roy Ayers. So someone could be currently searching for you, researching, maybe looking you up on online, maybe doing their due diligence because mind you, you had this energy of a four page letter. Um, and these are my thoughts. So someone has something that they would like to communicate to you and express to you. And I feel like in due time, you may receive, um, you may receive that message, but this is your reading. My beautiful Scorpios. Thank you so much for tuning in and tapping in. I hope that the message has resonated until next time. I send you a big fat ashe yo to all of my beloveds that are returning. You already know what it is. Love is love is love. Thank y'all.